There are two free DCTLs that I use every time to test for any clipping or color artifacting in my grade. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how they work and where you can get them for yourself for free. Let's get into it. So I've got an example project here with some shots from a bunch of different short films and commercials that I've shot recently. There's a lot of great variety in here to kind of test all the different aspects of my life, from crazy colors to really dark interiors to really lush green forests and everything in between. I've got all these clips in a group uh, and in the pre-clip level, I've just got a color space transform taking my black magic footage into DaVinci Wide Gamut. I've got all of my creative look building and output color space transform on the timeline level, just taking everything out of DaVinci Wide Gamut and putting it into Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4. So I'll leave a link down to this DCTL in the description. It'll take you to this page for Cullen Kelly. You just put your name and email in. You receive an email with the DCTL. And to install it, all you have to do is go into settings, over to color management, scroll down, open your LUT folder. And I've got a Cullen Kelly color folder in here already. Just copy and paste the DCTL file into that. Restart resolve and you'll be good to go. So to apply a DCTL to a node, we're just gonna go into our effects panel over here and just search for DCTL. Click and drag that onto our first node here. It's not gonna have anything selected by default, so what we're gonna do is open this up and we're gonna scroll down until we find the CKC exposure chart. It's now filled the screen with an exposure chart. We've got a couple of steps going from black to white and a gradient ramp beneath it. So we get a couple of options here. We get to decide where our middle gray point is, the step increment, so how drastic we want the change between each step to be, and the total number of steps if we want some finer detail. We also have the ability to turn on and off the ramp if we just wanted to see the steps in our waveform here, and we get to choose what tone curve we want represented. So as I'm working in a DaVinci Intermediate space, I'm gonna select DaVinci Intermediate, and now we've got a very natural looking contrast curve depicting what we're seeing in the exposure chart. So how is this actually useful when we're building looks? Well, first, it's a great way of seeing how any contrast adjustments in our look are affecting the image. So you can see as I crank the contrast here, we get a direct representation of what is happening. But you see if we use something like our curves here and we start clipping our whites, you can see that they start clipping on the waveform. That's the same with our black point as well. So it's a great way of avoiding something like crushed blacks when you're building these creative looks. If you bring your black point down too far, it'll disappear beyond the bottom limit of your waveform. But this also helps with color changes like split toning. So if I was to just turn on a 2383 LUT here, you can see exactly what it's doing to the red, green, and blue channels of our image. If it's a bit difficult to see the exact colors, we can go into our settings here and just drag the waveform brightness down until we start seeing those colors shine through. Now you can see very clearly what our red, green, and blue curves are doing. You can see in the highlights, we're getting this yellow push by dropping down the blue curve, and we're getting some cooler shadows by dropping down our red curve here. But as you can see, this is a very well-built LUT because nothing is crushing, nothing is clipping on the high end, and all these curves are very smooth and passing through a neutral point at our relatively middle gray. Just as an example, if we were to get a LUT that perhaps wasn't built correctly, or at least wasn't built for the DaVinci Y gamut color space, we turn that on, we can see things are definitely getting really funky, especially in our shadows down here, our red, green, in fact, all of our channels are clipping. Now this LUT is built for a Rec. 709 color space. I just wanted to use this as an example of what a problematic look might look like on the exposure chart. So a really great way of checking both tonal and color adjustments when you're building out your creative look. Now another great way of using this DCTL is gaining a better understanding of what tools such as our Lift, Gamma, and Gain are doing to our image. So you can see if I play around with first the Gain here, you can see that it is really affecting the highlights of our image, but in a natural, really soft fall off. If I start manipulating the Gamma, you can see that's really affecting the meat of the image, but for the most part is leaving our black and white points alone, which is really nice. And you can also see that reflected when I make a color change in our gamma, for instance. You can see most of that color change is happening in the middle, and then those color changes are converging back to neutral white and neutral black at the ends of the curve. Then when I use my lift, you can see that's really just affecting the black point and the shadows, and it becomes apparent how quickly and easily you can start crushing your blacks in the image 
So I'm not really a fan of using the lift too much when I'm, say, introducing contrast or when I'm changing colors. You can see when I start introducing other colors into my lift, those channels go straight down. That red channel is getting immediately clipped and our black point is totally lost. So it's a great way to gain a better understanding of what our normal everyday tools in Resolve are actually doing to our image. So let's move on to the second DCTL. We're going to scroll down and select RGB chips. And that's super intense straight out of the box. But you can see there are a bunch of different options to fine tweak this to our needs. So what this RGB chips DCTL does is literally generate a complete grid or chips of RGB color values from black to full saturation. Straight away, things are looking very cooked. So the first thing we're going to change is our band interval. And because we're working in DaVinci wide gamut, which is a log color space, I'm going to switch this over to equal log. And you can see we get a much nicer uh, gradient in our RGB chips here. You can change the saturation of these RGB chips and you can see that directly reflected on the vector scope down here. You can change the number of hues to get more detailed, but if you want it to be totally smooth, we can come down to our continuous mode and select fully continuous and that will generate a very smooth color spectrum. Another thing to note is as the RGB chips DCTL is not working in a DaVinci intermediate color space, we do need to accommodate for that. So what I've got at the end of my node tree here is my normal CST, but whenever I'm using the RGB chips, I'm gonna turn that off and turn on a secondary node with the color space transform, exactly the same as the other one. However, the only thing that's changed is the input color space is now Rec 709 instead of DaVinci Wide Gamut to accommodate for this full color spectrum. So once we make that change, we go from these really high saturations on this right half to a much more controlled level of saturation. And you can see that reflected in our waveform and our vector scope. Everything is looking nice and smooth. So how can we use this RGB chips DCTL? Well, I've been using it in two different ways. I've been using it as a stress tester for any creative looks that I'm building, but also just as a learning tool for where the limits are in certain resolve tools. For example, our hue versus hue curve. If I take a hue too far, say I select our yellows here, and I start moving this around, you can see those changes are being reflected very naturally. But if I take it too far, you see we start getting a split in here and we're introducing some colors that aren't really wanted in that area of the image. And you can see this kind of weird artifacting going on in the vector scope as well. You see if we push it too far, it starts overlapping. Hues are just running into each other. And you can see how careful and subtle we have to be with these tools in order to not break our image. So once again, I'll leave a link to this DCTL in the description. If you follow through that link, it'll take you to Thatcher Freeman's GitHub site. Where all you'll have to do is come over to these three dots, hit download. You'll download the raw DCTL file. And again, just copying and pasting that into the LUT folder that you can access through DaVinci settings, restart DaVinci, and now it'll show up in your DCTL list. Now, while we're in settings, there's a setting here for 3D lookup table interpolation. And by default, this is actually set to trilinear. I have this permanently set to tetrahedral as it just allows LUTs to work with so much more information and trilinear can sometimes cause cracking and artifacting. So it's best to just set this to tetrahedral and update your default preset. Now I've been using these two DCTLs a lot recently because I've been actually building my own LUT pack for Resolve designed specifically for DaVinci Wide Gamut, which is something I don't see a lot of recently. It's going to be 30 DaVinci Wide Gamut film inspired LUTs plus a bonus 2383 and 3513 film emulation LUTs thrown in there as well. If that sounds like something you'd be interested in, hit the subscribe button so you'll stay notified whenever I release those in the coming weeks. So if we go back and turn this exposure chart on, I'm gonna throw on one of my favorite LUTs from the pack that I've built so far, inspired by Joker, because how can you have a LUT pack without the Joker look? So I'm gonna throw on the Joker LUT, and as you can see, it's a super gentle look. If I turn that off and on, you can see we get some really subtle split toning, a really nice neutral gray point. Our blacks have got a nice filmic lift to them. If I turn our exposure chart off, you can see it having a really nice highlight roll off introducing those sickly yellows into those skin tones there and a really nice lift and compression in the shadows. You can see it is doing a bit of a hue manipulation on some of those reds and blues to take them a little closer to the yellows and cyans. But now I know that'll never break an image because if I turn this RGB DCTL on, switch my CST over, you can see this light is very subtly affecting those hues 
nothing's overlapping, nothing's compressing, and there are no artifacts going on. So regardless of what stage you're at in your color grading journey, these two free DCTLs are total game changers when you're building your own creative looks for any sort of project. And you can even see that I've been using these two DCTLs in my LUT creation process to ensure that they're never gonna break or cause artifacting in any images. I'll have more on those LUTs soon. If it's something that you're interested in, let me know in the comments, ask any questions. But until then, download those free DCTLs have a play around. They're really great for both gaining a better understanding of our tools inside of DaVinci, what's available to us, and for stress testing any of our creative looks that we build for our grades. But that's it from me. I'll see you in the next video.